I am Dracula. Oh, it's, it's really good to see you. I bid you welcome. Listen to them, children of the night. What music they It's most basic. Things that go bump in the night. The symbolic projections of our worst dreams. Dreams in which the frightful and the unnatural suddenly and shockingly intrude on our usually well-ordered lives. But the horrors that really work on us, the ones we remember forever, must do more than merely shock. They must instill terror and the most terrible things most of us ever have to bear are the nightmares of childhood. Can't you recall that feeling in some strange and shadowy place? No one around to hear your cries? That's the feeling the best horror movies conjure up for us. The Mummy, 1932. The most basic fear to be alone in a graveyard or a crypt. <laughs> Was anyone ever more alone or more terrorized than Fay Ray awaiting the appearance of the mighty Khan? of that damn car. Wait, it uh, sounds so weird. Wait, I'm scared. No, I promise you I won't go out. Tell me what to do, baby. I, I, uh...
can, open space, no place to hide. The storm rising and something malevolent in the air. There's dread in that too. The film, the omen. Let all baleful spirits that threaten the souls of men be banished by the sprinkling of the salt. Be thou exorcised, O Dracula, and thy body long undead. Find destruction throughout eternity in the name of thy dark, unholy master. There have been over a hundred vampire movies, more than any other kind of horror film. Lon Chaney Jr. in Son of Dracula. John Carradine in House of Dracula. Vampires have the power to change form at will. Bats are special favorites. Bela Lugosi must finally have wished he could flap away from his Dracula image. But that was the one transformation he could never entirely manage. For most people, the 1930 sound version of Bram Stoker's novel and the hit play made from it remains the definitive Dracula movie. There was an historical Dracula, a notorious 15th century Transylvanian nobleman and sadist, Vlad the Impaler. Bela Lugosi first gave Dracula his immortal image on stage in London and New York. Centuries of folk tales turned the historical Dracula's metaphorical bloodthirstiness into a literal need for a daily drink of the stuff. Lugosi's strange charm made it acceptable movie fare. I hope you will find this comfortable. Thanks, it looks very inviting. Ouch! Oh, it's nothing serious, just a small cut from that paper clip. It's just a scratch. This is very old one. I hope you will like it. Aren't you drinking? I never drink. Why? Lugosi's successor, Dracula to the modern age, is Christopher Lee. His returns from the twilight world of the undead are always spectacular. And so is his style when it comes to quenching his unnatural thirst.
the 1960s, Dracula figures like David Peake were, as they said, letting it all hang out, including their fangs. In the cycle of horror pictures made by Britain's Hammer films, the implicit eroticism of the older Dracula movies became explicit. His brides yielded to him lovingly. The female of the vampire species is also much in evidence lately. Vampire hunting is no longer just a matter of quietly bringing reason to bear on the unreasonable. It requires more heroic exertions, as Peter Cushing shows in Brides of Dracula. Some things never change, though. Along with the cross and garlic necklaces, holy water is the sovereign remedy for vampirism. She was a romantic 19-year-old girl, married to the leading poet of her age, Shelley. They went off to a chalet in Switzerland for a vacation in 1817, where another great poet, Lord Byron, joined them. One evening, in a room somewhat like this one, they stayed up late talking about the way science was beginning to challenge the secrets of God and nature. That night, Mary Shelley literally dreamed up the novel that she would call Frankenstein. Her story, the first to take up the theme of power-mad science and its potentially terrible consequences, is the crucial event in the history of horror fiction. The first movie version of it, made in 1930, at the same time in the same studio as Dracula, is a crucial event in the history of movie horror. The beginning of a main line that still hasn't run out. Like Dracula, Frankenstein's monster travels on a Transylvanian passport. Strange-looking country. Not much like America, is it? On my first trip to Europe, I was prepared for anything, but... Well, I'm glad we went to London and Paris first. We must be getting close to the village now. It's exciting, isn't it? Up there in the darkness, a new life lies before us. A beautiful castle. I wonder if there's a moat. And a drawbridge, and a great, tall, dark tower. The castle itself is supposed to be haunted. Because of... Yes. Yes, because of the things my father did there. I remember stories my mother used to tell me when I was quite young in England. I dreamed of being the first to give to the world the secret that God is so jealous of. The formula for life. Think of the power to create a man. It wasn't my father's fault that the being he created became a senseless, murderous monster. He was right. Resting, waiting for a new life to come. 
was the unforeseen blunder of a stupid assistant who gave his creation the brain of a killer instead of a normal one. Huh. How my father was made to suffer for that mistake. His name has become synonymous with horror, monsters. Why, nine out of ten people call that misshapen creature of my father's experiments. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Monster always had a short fuse and no taste for subtlety. Neither did most of the people he encountered. The results were all these terrible misunderstandings. It's no wonder children have always had a special sympathy for him. His perceptions of the world and his responses to it were those of an innocent child, an enviably strong child, of course. In the end, in every picture, an angry populace rose up to punish him. horror fans regard James Whale's The Bride of Frankenstein in 1936 as the most stylish Frankenstein film, and this as the greatest of all creation scenes, a high camp classic. Colin Clive and Ernest Thessinger with the mad midwives. Monsters intended was Elsa Lanchester. The Bride of Frankenstein.
show you how they burnt. Did you ever see an animal skin, Yarmar? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do to you now. These things here are manacles, which are controlled by that lever. Clasp round the wrist and ankles, they hold a man on the slab. Helpless, he cannot move. He looks up and sees a knife flashing. In 15 minutes, the knife reaches the heart. Got you. The sleep of reason brings forth monsters, says the old adage. And in the age of Hitler, in a time when almost all our values were violently challenged, the movies brought forth monsters by the dozens. Karloff and Lugosi may have dominated movie horror in the 30s and 40s, but the theaters fairly teemed with many other bogeymen as well. They symbolized our anxieties, allowed us briefly to confront them, and then encouraged us to laugh them away. The wolf is neither man nor wolf but a satanic creature with the worst qualities of both. Lon Chaney Jr. carried on a family tradition in his career, which peaked in his wolfman roles. Whenever the moon was full, gentle Larry Talbot turned into a creature who not only had to kill, but actually enjoyed it. Only death could release him from his awful fate. And legend insisted that death must come from a silver bullet if his final sleep was not to be interrupted by ghostly, hirsute wanderings. Wolfman was the only movie monster who hated his work and prayed with tedious frequency for someone to stop him before he killed more. Even a man who is pure at heart and says his prayers by night. And you know. Daniel told me. Oh, Larry. Last night I killed a man. You didn't know what you were doing. But I did. I wanted to kill. And I knew that I wanted to. Tonight, the moon will rise again. I'll become that beast. Lycanthropy was supplied by the distinguished Russian actress, Maria Uspenskaya. Possessed by mysterious knowledge and power, she had a strange way with words. But then she was a gypsy. The way you walk is thorny, through no fault of your own. But as the rain enters the soil, the river enters the sea, find peace for a moment, my son. What are you doing here? I came to help you. <laughs> Harry, the dogs, they are hunting you. Cursed by immortality, the wolfman never found the peace he sought. Not as long as the sequels remained profitable.
Black Lagoon, and there's a creature down there. Compared to the monsters from outer space, he's really a rather nice creature. Anyway, he's capable of falling in love with Julie Adams. Beauty and the Beast, retold in modern terms. characteristic of monsters that they're carried away by their romantic impulses. Visitors from outer space were unreasonable. Some were super reasonable. Michael Rennie, Sam Jaffe, Patricia Neal, the day the Earth stood still. I am leaving soon. And you will forgive me if I speak bluntly. The universe grows smaller every day. And the threat of aggression by any group, anywhere, can no longer be tolerated. For our policemen, we created a race of robots. Their function is to patrol the planets in spaceships like this one, and preserve the peace. In matters of aggression, we have given them absolute power over us. This power cannot be revoked. At the first sign of violence, they act automatically against the aggressor. The penalty for provoking their action is too terrible to risk. I came here to give you these facts. It is no concern of ours how you run your own planet. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned-out cinder. Your choice is simple. Join us and live in peace, or pursue your present course and face obliteration. We shall be waiting for your answer. The decision rests with you. most famous terror sequence in the history of movies, continues to brood over this Hollywood backlot. And somehow it seems to go on brooding over the consciousness of almost everyone who has ever seen Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. That's one of the things you hope will happen when you make a film that can never really count on. Psycho is as close as Hitch ever came to making a classic creaky door gothic, but what's important about it historically is that it moved a horror even closer to home and put it right on our doorsteps.
In a few years, it would become a commonplace theory that something was very wrong with that most basic of institutions, the family. But Psycho was the first important symbolic statement of that idea, for it showed senseless murder motivated by such matters as a son whose relationship with his mother was a wild mixture of emotions best left unnamed. Mother, please, it's just for a few days, just for a few days so they won't find you. Just for a few days? In that dark, dank fruit cellar? No! You hit me there once, boy, and you won't do it again. Not ever again. Now get out! I told you to get out, boy. I'll carry you, Mother. Norman, what do you think you're doing? Don't you touch me! Don't! After a period when it seemed a whole generation must be possessed by the devil, you could believe even a preschooler might be. I can't be with him all day. You need Crest. Why Crest? Long-lasting cavity protection. It keeps on working even after he stops brushing. Crest is so effective, it provides protection that doesn't rinse out. With every brushing, the Floristan and Crest builds protection that keeps on working long after you stop brushing. I know Crest there even when I can't be. How can you be so sure? His good checkups prove it. <laughs> May I borrow your Crest? Oh, Jimmy! Crest, because it keeps on protecting long after you stop brushing. What is that? A great buy. Got it at a garage sale. Got some great buys at the market, too. Oh, really? They're out there, if you know where to look. Oh, you even did the dishes. Yep. Hey, look at these glasses. Yesterday's are really clear. The ones I did are spotty. My Cascade did that? We were out of Cascade. And this brand was a bargain. Well, you saved a few pennies. Yeah, but look at the spots. You can see the difference Cascade can make. Try Cascade. Most bargain brands can leave drops that spot, but Cascade's sheeting action leaves glasses virtually spotless. You were right about the Cascade, but you've got to admit, this vase was oh. a real buy. For virtually spotless dishes, you can see why Cascade's the better buy. If evil now shared our homes with us, might even be residing unacknowledged in the minds of those we loved, then it could be everywhere, even in such a peaceful, pleasant village as this. For it could possess even those innocent and ordinary creatures with whom we had peaceably shared the world since time began. Once again, it was Alfred Hitchcock who showed the way with the birds in 1963. Birds are not aggressive creatures, miss. They bring beauty into the world. It is mankind right now. Sam, three southern fried chicken. Baked potato on all of them. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. Something terrible is happening. It's happened. the end of the world. 
I hardly think a few birds are going to bring about the end of the world. It's the end of the world. Why not, Mrs. Bundy? Because there are 8,650 species of birds in the world today, Mr. Carter. It is estimated that 5,750,000,000 birds live in the United States alone, the five continents of the world. Kill them all, get rid of them, messy animals. Probably contain more than 100 billion birds. Goats are scavengers anyway, most birds are. Get yourselves guns and wipe them off the face of the earth. <laughs> that would hardly be possible. Well, hope you folks figure this thing out. It's the end of the world. Now, it seemed, even the natural order was in disorder. In the chance universe that everyone talked about, there was surely a chance that even our fine-feathered friends might revolt against man's dominion. Even the eye of the cat was perceived to be an evil eye, as Gail Honeycutt discovers. Creatures were encouraged to get their act together. Kiss of the Vampire.
worst fantasy. One of nature's known bad guys stops being a chance killer and becomes a conscious and psychopathic murderer. What we are dealing with here is a perfect engine, uh, an eating machine. He was more than that. He was a money-making machine for his creators. Because our fear of random crime in the streets could be equally projected as random crime at the beach. Jaws Shark was a mugger from the deep. is ended. Horror is banished, as it must be, as it always has been in these pictures, with our only reliable weapons, the soft murmurings of the humane heart, the brave whispers of the intelligent voice. Good night. Your Thursday informed by anchorman Bob Schieffer on Thursday morning on CBS. And Saturday, take the most exciting plunge ever and discover the lost treasure of the Concepcion. Sunday, catch a brand new edition of 60 Minutes. And now, stay tuned for Angie Dickinson as the suicide's wife. Next, following news break.